What's going on guys? So today we are out here, Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we are taking a look at this Jayco North Point fifth wheel. This is a really, really large fifth wheel. This is the 375 BH FS. Now this has a lot of really cool elements about it and a few things that I would do a little differently if I could figure out how I could do them a little differently. But I think you're gonna like this video. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so before we get started, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,500 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 1,996 pounds. This thing is approximately 41 feet long, so definitely a good size fifth wheel. This is what you would want to tow with a one-ton dually pickup truck. I would not put this behind a single rear wheel truck, simply because this is a full profile fifth wheel, which means it's very tall, and it is very long, and it's relatively heavy. All things that are best tackled with a dually. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible to tow this with a single rear wheel truck, but if you're wanting my best opinion on what to tow something like this with, it would be a dually. Let's take a look at the front storage area. Even though the doors are relatively thin, it's definitely a higher density material than many. This is your wet bay. I like the fact that they have a separator here as well. Very nicely marked and very clean wet bay. Drop frame on this gives you a huge amount of storage. I mean, just a ton of storage in here, which is really nice. Lots of room for just about everything. I like that they put this little hook here. I'm guessing it's probably for the power cable. But this is nice. Your auto leveling system's also up here as well, which is kind of different. Typically, it would be on the door here, and that is the equalizer auto leveling system. Up front here is gonna be your propane housing. I like it when they set it up this way. It's a little bit easier to manage. You don't have to walk to both sides of the unit to access it, and it's just easy to get to your tanks to change them out if you need to. You have your power disconnect up here. So up front, they utilize a Schwintec slide, and in the back, they utilize a rack and pinion slide system. It has a 12-inch I-beam, which transitions to an 8-inch I-beam for the drop frame. Again, equalizer auto leveling system. That is one that you don't see on a lot of fifth wheels. Equalizer is big in the motorhome market, but again, I don't see them on a lot of fifth wheels, which is really cool to see though. Coming around, you can see this unit has the Moride Cree 3000 suspension system, runs the Goodyear Endurance tires, which is common on all Jayco models max of 80 PSI in these. I do wish that they would go with a G-rated tire. Even if Endurance doesn't make one, it would be nice to see them utilize a brand that does provide a G-rated tire on these units. Again, you have a Schwintec slide back here and a rack and pinion on this one. This unit has a nice high gloss exterior to it, which looks really good actually. Coming back, you have your 50 amp power connection right there. All LED lighting. It is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. There's no receiver in the back, so you don't have an ability to put a cargo rack back here. This is a pretty long Schwintec slide. Coming over here, you have your second entry. It has aluminum steps. Get in the other side of your suspension. It is nice that they do have the heavy duty shackle straps with the greasable wet bolts. They got them pinched in pretty tight in here. This has the Moride step above step system as well. You can see this is the 375 BHFS L1 LY. Coming up you can see that this has one long awning on this side. Coming inside. So this is a really cool floor plan. There's lots of reasons to like this floor plan because they're trying to introduce a lot of elements of a rear living room design by giving you a sofa and recliners right here. Really beautiful touches with all of the cabinetry and the contrasting wood tones. I love how they put your controls behind an actual panel here as opposed to having them just on display. Coming around, 
Really like the trim and the accent in here. It gives it a very nice upscale look, especially when they mix the two colors, when you have your dark tones and your light tones. Full residential Whirlpool refrigerator. Has your stove and oven combo right here. Looks like there's about four inches on that side, maybe five inches on this side of space for your handles. Has a nice Furion microwave. Nice island. You know, it's not a terribly large island, but this is the space that you're kind of dealing with. And one of the things that is interesting about this floor plan is the positioning of the TV. So if you're sitting in these recliners, you are looking over your island and faucet to look at the TV. And that's not my favorite plan. I mean, some people like this. This is very common in toy haulers. This is something that you see quite often in toy haulers because they're trying to fit as much as possible. I think it looks really nice, but I don't think it's the best positioning of the TV unless everyone's out of the kitchen. But as you can see, the faucet here kind of you know, obstructs part of your view. And if you're shorter, you may not be able to see around that at all. You'd have to sit on the chairs over here. So that's my main critique of this unit is the positioning of the TV in retrospect to the seating areas that you would be watching it from. Coming over here, you have a booth style dinette, which converts into a bed, which is nice, gives you extra sleeping space. This is gonna turn into a bed, and this is gonna turn into a bed, but the kitchen space is relatively tight. Even though it's really nice in terms of amenities, it's really nice in terms of materials and the look, it's still kind of a tight area. I have the price up here. So this has an MSRP of $94,545 and the sale price is $67,999. Let's take a look at the bunkhouse area. So this is what I'm talking about. This is beautiful. This is an amazing bunkhouse area. You have these really interesting style kind of sport seats back here for the kids if they're going to be playing games or I guess watching TV. Over here, you have a really nice flip-up bunk. They used mainly dark tones back here. You have a bunk right here and a bunk right there. So you can sleep a lot of people here, and you can isolate them completely from the living area if you want as well, which is really nice. You have all your cabinetry here, nice little shelf, TV pre-mounted, and you have more cabinets up top. So you have a lot of space back here and a lot of storage. This would be a great office. You have a nice half bath here as well. It's a good size half bath as well. So you have your second entrance, really nice white contrasting tones here. So even though you have your darker tones out here, you have your lighter tones in there, but it looks really nice. Definitely the bunkhouse is the standout in this specific unit. You know, I do like this area right here. And if you're not watching TV and if you're simply entertaining, this is a great space. It's not bad at all. You have that L shape, which is really nice. The island definitely is, I think, a little too far into this space. And with the way that they kind of position the TV and everything, they probably could have even angled the island right here. I don't know if it would have fit. Well, it wouldn't fit when the slide's in. So that would be your problem. And that's something that you all need to think about anytime you are critiquing a floor plan. It's really easy to say, well, let's just move this back a little bit or over this way a little bit or tilt it a little bit. But whenever you button these things up and all the slides are in, everything kind of pinches up against everything else. If you left a toy right here, when this slide comes in, it'd probably crush it. Overall, it's a good layout. You know, it's nice, but this area does feel a little bit smaller than I'd like. I think they probably could have utilized this space a little bit differently. Overall, though, it accomplishes the task that they're looking for, and that is to seat a lot of people in this area, because you can seat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Plus, you could probably put a bar stool right here, and it gives you a good amount of space overall work our way up the steps. I love the fact that due to LCI kind of redesigning how they did their bath deck, and their bath deck is this elevated area right here that goes back, they now have the ability to essentially put laminate floor all the way up to the front as opposed to having to switch to carpet right there. Otherwise you'd see a nasty seam. Definitely like the bathroom. The bathroom and the bunkhouse are fantastic in this unit. Bathroom's nice because it gives you a heck of a lot of storage. I mean, that is just a tremendous amount of storage, and it goes back a solid three feet. More storage up here. Really nice one-piece shower. Lots of countertop space. Nice upgraded basin. Really nice medicine cabinet and mirror. Somebody. This is just a beautiful, beautiful bathroom. 
and plenty of room in front of the toilet, which matters. Coming into the master bedroom, king size bed, plenty of space on each side of the bed, which is really nice. One of the sensors looks like it was being worked on, but that just slips back in and we'll put the screws on it, but it might have gotten disconnected. Has a standard Coleman system in here. So it has a whisper quiet system in the back and it has your standard air conditioning system up here, both of which are ducted. Really beautiful, beautiful closet. I mean, they have finished this thing out so well. This is the type of closet that I like to see. Plenty of room. You could even put a vacuum in here. You got a lot of space. If you take these shelves out, you can put a washer and dryer assembly in here, which is also really nice. But that is a beautiful closet. And I really like the size of the bed here. I like that shiplap board across the back, the trimming around it. And even over here, they've trimmed off the area where the TV goes and given you a four drawer dresser at the end of the bed. Honestly, this is a really nice fifth wheel layout. It really is. The thing that for me is a little bit confusing is could they have changed this space right here to make it a little bit different? Now, some people will say they could have swapped the refrigerator with where the TV is, but you can't because that wall isn't that deep and it goes into the half bath that's back there. What I probably would have done is I would have found some space in here to move the bathroom to a different location, free up this area right here. That way we could have put the refrigerator there and put the entertainment center there and move the island this way. But I would love to get your feedback on something like this. Let me know what you think. I know there are people that will look at this floor plan and say, that's it. That's the one we want. That is awesome. I know there will be some people that say, you know what? I don't like how you have to look over the island from those chairs to see the TV. And then there will be some people who are just okay with it. They're like, you know what? It doesn't bother me. I love the bunkhouse. I love the bathroom. I love the front bedroom area. I love the whisper quiet air conditioning system. This is a floor plan I could live with. Which one are you? You know, do you love this floor plan? Would you like to change it? If you could change it, how would you change it? Maybe that's a discussion that's worth having in the comments. You know, why something is put where it is. And if you wanted to move it, what would prevent you from moving it? Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.